Hello, welcome to Pro Modeler. I'm Philip Florey. This particular video bill, what we're going to be working on is the 132nd scale uh, Trumpeter Fairy Swordfish. This is the Mark II variant. They do two versions. They do the Mark I and the Mark II. Pretty similar, just a few little changes with the kit, but the overall kit will go together exactly the same for whichever version you're going to be doing. As I say, quite a classic aircraft. Um, as I say, we're doing a biplane here. Some of the little features in this, it's got um, photo etch, uh, wire bracing and things like that that we're going to be working on and bits and pieces. The other thing as well, we just open up the box here to have a little bit of a look just like this. As you can see, very sturdy, some nice bits and pieces in here, nice colour, but we'll check, look at all these parts a little bit closer in a moment. What we also will be doing with it though um, is using these. Now these are from Edar, these are photo etch sets for this particular one. Um, we've got here a colour one, uh, this is going to be for the cockpit detail, obviously instrumentation, things like that. And then on the back here we've got another photo etch one, which is basically for all the internals and bits and pieces uh, around the cockpit area and some other little things, uh, little coolers and bits and pieces like that. Very nicely detailed some of this, um, extremely fiddly and fine, so it's going to be fun working with those. The other thing as well we've got um, here, this is the external uh, brace set now. Uh, obviously we'll look at these a lot more closely in detail. Basically hundreds of little tiny details which go on the outside of this particular aircraft. As you can imagine, um, it is a biplane, so you're talking biplane era. So we've got problems on there, obviously because it's actually a doped linen uh, instead of being a metal skin to the actual aircraft. So these little touches as well, very, very nicely done, but say we'll work these through as we go through the entire build. So let's have a closer look at the kit. Okay, so the kit itself is a nice sturdy box, as we said a minute ago, um, and little things. So the first thing you notice is you've got a very nice full colour turnout sheet for this one. Um, to be honest, I'm going to do this one markings out of the box, so we're going to be doing it in the white, because I think it's a very much the classic scheme, and obviously we think of the Bismarck when we think, think of this aircraft, uh, and things like that. So that's the scheme we're going to be going with. We're going to do it wings folded as well, purely because this is 132nd scale. So it is going to be quite a large aircraft, as you can imagine. Instructions themselves, um, they're again pretty much standard. If you've seen some of my other video builds or you're familiar with their kit, quite nicely laid out. Obviously, when you look through these things, you can then see about <coughs> sorry, changing certain parts uh, and the things you can do. Obviously, with the photo etch, we've got the parts coming along, so we're going to be making some changes. And perhaps we're going to have to change some of the surface detail uh, and bits and pieces like that for changing, obviously, over the photo etch. The wire bracing and bits and pieces we'll talk about in a moment, but the weapons fit. But the kit itself, as you can probably see just by these parts, um, there isn't much to it. It's quite a basic aircraft, we're not talking you know, big engines and things like that, or jets and complicated intakes and bits, because we are talking quite an older aircraft. Box and tail, to give you an idea of the size, if we whip some of these parts out of the bags. All nicely individually bagged up, which we find with Trumpeter, which is very nice of them to do. Um, looking at the detail, obviously we've got, um, as we were saying, this is going to be a canvas aircraft, so you can see the ribbing coming through. We're going to be doing some dry brushing to bring these to life with the washes uh, and bits like that. So as you can see, very nicely done. All the ejector pin marks seem to be out of the way. One little nice touch as we run through these is this particular bag. So if we just grab that one, and then we grab this one. Some of you who are familiar with the uh, Tamiya kits will know that um, Tamiya did something similar. We've got here a completely clear sprue section. This is the main fuselage and it's identical to this one here. Um, they're exactly the same, uh, but obviously depending if you wanted to have it as a see-through uh, cockpit area and perhaps the engine, you could use the clear sprues or you could mask off certain areas uh, for your painting so you can still see it in. And the great thing about this particular one is actually it is very, very clear. A nice tip I would do, um, personally I'm not going to be using the clear sprue, uh, I'm going to be using the actual the, the normal plastic ones, but what you can do is dip these first into a nice bath of clear like this, okay? This will make these very, very clear uh, and a lot more um, sort of transparent and it'll get rid of any little scratches and blemishes and things like that. But before you start working on it, make sure it's completely, completely dry. So leave them in an airing cupboard for uh, a couple of days to go completely off. Otherwise you can make a, a bit of a hash when you go around to do it all. But there we go, so that's the, the main sprues as you can see there again. We've got some nice ribbing showing through detail and that there again we can use. And to be honest, we've got um, this particular one here, this photo etch sheet here, is all of these little tiny details, these little uh, little guides uh, and little plating, and it's where the actual sections 
uh, are drawn onto the actual the main sprue um, of the actual formers of the aircraft themselves. So as you say, we can replace those or you could lose, uh, leave them on. Um, the photo etch ones are obviously a lot more detailed than these, but then if you didn't want to go around and put all of these on, you really don't have to, personal choice. This particular sprue over here we've got here, just move those out of the way, is one of the main ones. In this particular bag we get two. And this is covering the uh, engine section. Some nice detail on the engine. Not as crisp perhaps as I'd be hoping for this type of scale, but there again, it gives us plenty to start with. And if you are into scratch building, you can come along obviously with some uh, cabling, um, some lead wire, and obviously add uh, a lot of detail to this engine section. Unfortunately, again, it's gonna be covered up. You're not gonna really see it, but certainly from the front part, you will be able to see it. Um, so it might be worth doing a little bit like that. We've got the fuel tanks here. We've got the prop, which obviously is a solid uh, one piece prop as well. So that's that. <clears throat> Down here we can see these little guys, these actual the, the form sections uh, of the actual the structure uh, around the actual cockpit area uh, and this is actually what holds the entire aircraft together. This is what everything is going to be bolted to uh, and the dope rigging is going to be on the outside of. So it's going to be a nice detailed cockpit, very similar as I say to the uh, Tamiya kit as we run, run through. Uh, we got another bag here, this particular one. <clears throat> We've got here is the torpedo, the famous sort of torpedo. Nice one, quite nicely detailed. It's got a bit of detail to it and everything else. We've got some more here. We've got the exhaust stacks. Um, I know there are some uh, other companies coming out with some new parts for these. So by the time you get this video, they might be available if you wanted to go for a resin uh, replacement exhaust stacks on this. There again, some quite nice detail. As we said, there isn't massive amounts of sprues to this particular kit like some of the others we've done recently, uh, even in 148s, but there we go. Uh, as I said, more detail, as you can see, we've got the sprues here for the actual, um, this is a lot of the actual main rigging gear uh, that supports the wing section and things like that. It does seem to be all okay. We've got not a hint of flash anywhere on this, as we can imagine on such a, a newer kit. Uh, the detail is very nicely done. So we're quite happy with all of those. And then obviously we're looking at all the little parts and we're looking for imperfections or anything else like that. All looks to be absolutely fantastic. Some of the bigger ones down here, we've got I say it's lovely when they're in individual bags like this. Top of the wing sections, all the bottoms. There again, we've got the holes for opening up uh, all the parts on the bottom. Very nicely done like that. And then obviously we've got more wing sections in that bag there if we rattle through. I'll only open one of these up because this is doubled up. But what we've got here is a twin. We've got rockets and free fall bombs and depth charges and things like that and markers uh, for the weapons fit. As you can imagine, we've got another bag which is exactly the same as this one. Uh, for doing that so you are going to have some spares over which is a very nice touch the other thing as well we get a little box which acts as a strengthener in the main box itself in here got some nice large rubber tires now i am aware of there are um, manufacturers out there who now do resin replacements with the different types this one has got the grooved uh, tread on it you can have a diamond pattern or perfectly smooth so they are available We've got a little bit of clear parts. Um, we've got the little uh, viewing window so the uh, pilot can see the aircraft carries is coming in. We've got a clear instrument panel. Obviously, this is going to be changed over slightly with the photo etch ones, as you can imagine. Um, and obviously, not much glass on this one because it's an open cockpit. And then we've got this little piece. Now, this here is the photo etch area. Now, this is all the bracing wires. Um, people say, but they're flat. Um, honestly, go and look at the real thing. They are flat in real life. Uh, even on the World War II aircraft, they're not round cables. They're actually flattened uh, and a little bit of uh, um, sort of an oval shape to them, uh, even if they're very much on a wiry side. <coughs> and obviously, they do vibrate as they fly along. Uh, and things like that. So that's the actual main parts here. Now, the bits we're going to be using, as we said uh, a moment ago, is these Eddard sections. So if we have a quick look-see what we get in the, the packet. Okay, this here, uh, you might see it's on a backing sheet. This is because this is glued on the back. Now the glue on these, to be honest, I've been doing these a while now, isn't the best in the world and I will be gluing them on top of this as well because they do have a habit of not exactly sticking brilliantly. The photo etch sheet itself, we've got some nice little details going on on these, um, but as I say, we'll talk about those. But this level of detail, you're not gonna find on plastic. So it is nice to have these sort of floor areas and things like that done with this detail. And certainly we've got hubs and things like that. Very nice. As you can imagine, Eddard are very good 
telling you exactly where the parts go, what you need to sand off to make flat. So you just follow the instructions and work your way through them. And also they show about actually getting the parts off, which I'll talk through with you as well and how they all go together. It looks to be a very, very interesting build. I haven't done a World War, uh, a biplane aircraft like this in many, many moons. So it's all a learning curve for me as well with some of the new techniques we can do with this particular one. So let's get going with the cockpit. Okay, so we've got ourselves all prepared out. Um, as you can probably see, we've got some of the, the larger bits off the sprue and we've cleaned them up generally. Um, we'll show you a little bit more about that later. Got some of the cockpit parts out. One thing to remember, obviously we're doing uh, this type of build with a photo etch set. So what we've got, we've got the instructions up in front of me here. We've also got just here all the ones for the uh, photo etch parts. Now obviously, you know, it's very easy to forget about them, put them on. One little thing I will say, somebody said to me the other day about um, with working with photo edge, there's just so much of it to do and all the rest of it. Don't forget, you can pick and choose what parts you want to use. If you've got tiny little things and you think, well, really, I can't see much difference between, you know, perhaps putting these uh, buckles underneath here. Um, we've got this part down here, which is a, like a fabric roll of putting the buckles on. Nobody's going to see it. Why bother? Well, don't bother. That's a simple. Just put on the main ones you want to use out of it. I've basically got this set. Uh, for this little bit here, this is the actual flooring. Um, uh, it's a very nice piece. Uh, it's got great detail on the surface. There's some great details for these other bits and pieces you can see here on the close-up. Uh, and that's the point of getting this particular set. And then obviously we've got a very nice fully colour, he said trying to pick it up, full colour um, fret. Uh, for doing the instrument panels and the radios and things like that, which to be honest, you know, trying to hand paint these would be a little bit difficult. So by having them on a nice little fret sheet like this makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to pick and choose which parts I actually want to use instead of going through and perhaps doing every single one. So looking at the instructions, obviously, um, and your paint codes, getting them all sorted, and obviously we'll talk about those as we make our way through the build. Sometimes I deviate over from what is said here to some colours perhaps I want to use and things like that. As I said, usual tools we've got out for these types of things. I've got myself a pair of tweezers, my disposable knife, which is very handy to have. I've um, got myself some good, strong, friskus these are scissors for cutting sprues and any other bits and pieces. Clamping tweezers, spring-loaded, so they hold on themselves, so they're great for holding small parts. And then I've just got myself some files, got some thin ones and thicker ones, sanding sponges, got some polishing ones as well here for sanding off, things like that. And the other thing I've got is a little pin vise for putting in some little details, perhaps that have been mismolded and things like that. That's my main bits that I've got here. I've got a pea cutter as well, just if we need it. But they're my main tools uh, and I'll talk about the others as we make our way through the build. So there we go. So what we've done, we've put a few little bits together already. Uh, we've got here, this is the rear seat area that's going to be uh, holding on the seat. Uh, we've done that one already, we've put that in. Uh, we've also done, uh, we've put the little pedals on. Good example of this coming up and things. So if you do wondering, hold on, what about those? He's done those already, that's the reason why. Okay, so if we make our way um, through these first early stages, obviously looking at, uh, ahead at the actual build. So what we've got here, we've got the floor section. Uh, we're going to be checking with our, our photo etch ones as well to seeing if we're making any changes or adding little parts to them, uh, of which we are. So what we're going to do now, we're going to have a look at what we're going to do. Okay, I'm not going to worry about doing the actual uh, foot loops um, on the uh, the, the um, photo etch ones because you're not going to be able to see those. And a few of the little others, unfortunately, they're going to be hidden far, far too much. So what we'll do, we've got our first section here and we've got this little bit of uh, handle goes on here so we're just going to clip that into place he says knowledgeable first part you can't even get it in there we come on that's that part in so we're going to do a tiny drop of glue on the bottom just to weld that in and hold that in. We can paint this all separately afterwards and pick out all the little details. Same one for this, we've got this part E23, obviously we've got a PE part for it as well, but I'm not gonna worry about that because it's far, far too small and you're never gonna be able to see it. So we'll just have that out of the way as well. So we can put that part in. There's an ejector pin mark on the side of that particular part as well. You might be able to see on the close-up just up here. I'm not worried about that. You're not going to see it. It's going to be up against the side, so don't worry about that. Now, we've actually got here this front section. We're not going to put the seat in yet. We're just going to do the major construction work. Okay, so what we'll do... Let's set this guy in here. This is the A-frame there. We've already put the pedals on. You might be able to see. 
tight getting this in to start with. Okay, that one's in, so we're just going to come along, have our glue in, let that soak through. Okay, and this is what's going to hold up this front pilot's area of the cockpit. So we're just going to put a little dab on the inside, just in there like that. And then this little guy is going to come along and hopefully sit in here. There we go. That's that part done just like that. It goes together very, very quickly, actually, this kit. It's quite a nice one. Some of you, perhaps, who were uh, perhaps going to build the uh, Tamiya kit, uh, you might recognise it actually goes together just the same uh, in a lot of the steps of this. So if you are thinking about it, uh, you can follow this video very, very closely to it as well. Saying about these locking tweezers, great things though, because we can hold it like that. Okay, poke it up at an angle, and there we go. It sits and holds it off the floor. Nothing's going to get dented and things like that. So that's those bits done just like that. Okay, we can put the control column stick is going to come up through the floor. Now I've got little parts to add on to this, but we'll put those on afterwards once it's in, I feel. Okay, now the control column actually pushes away. So we'll just make sure those are in place. Okay, and we're just going to make sure the control column goes up into the correct position. Just give a bit of a push in, coming on with the glue, just into that. As I say, then what we're going to do, we're going to go around and pick all these out afterwards. Okay, the seat itself, we're going to paint that as a separate and we'll do that afterwards as, as well. So that's those parts on just like that, going in quite nicely. So we can let that stand off just a, one moment to dry off. Now, the actual floor section we've got here okay now this is e1 what we've actually done already we've taken off a large lump that was poking up here um, because there's a photo etch part that's actually going to replace that okay now what happens is we've got our first photo etch just going to go on so what we do using scissors you can put it down flat on the surface and then cut them away the trouble is i find find on a cutting mat a soft one you tend to bend it i like using a good pair of scissors so what we do is pop these in like this and just snip the tiny little holders okay just as I would do if I was doing anything else gonna work my way down the sides okay these bottoms one to come off where is it oh it's up there spot the front Okay, always keep them as flat as possible. The thing is, if you curve them, they're a problem to actually get to stick down. So by having them down, usual thing when using with photo etch as well, dry fit them. So pop them along, pop it in, and make sure it actually fits in. And obviously this one here, it's going around about the flooring area and things like that. So we want to make sure it all fits in. Very rough texture on this one, so be careful how you handle it. Now, two ways of doing this. You can either use a PVA glue, or a good one to use is Gator glue. Works absolutely great on this type of stuff. Something on a floor like this, I'm not that wor really worried about it, so what I'm going to use is a little bit of uh, super glue. We'll just grab ourselves. This. Tiny bit of tape. Okay, so we just pop this up here. Okay, now the reason for having that is just to stop my workbench getting covered in super glue. Okay, bit of a blob down like that. And then what we do, grab ourselves a cocktail stick. Okay, now we're not going to put this to the edge, got a nice blob on just like this. Okay, in the middle, I'm not going to go too near anywhere that has actual detail because I don't want it to squish through if that makes sense. When we push it down obviously it'll push it to the outsides. We're thinning it out just a little bit. Okay, quite a bit around the back. This area back here. Okay. Just a little bits down here. Okay, so once that's on, we'll lay it down. 
coming along with our photo etch part, so we're just going to stick it back. Now this is a what we call a medium super glue. Now the great thing about the medium one or the thicker, they don't dry instantly. You touch it on, it takes a little bit for it to move around. But there we go. We push that down. Okay, there we go. All done. First part of that little bit of photo etch, and it does give a very nice floor uh, type of colouring to that one. Okay, so what we're going to do, we come across and we've done this little part here uh, on there. So we've done that one. And then what we're going to do is obviously we can put the first part on as well. So it's just the same. We take this part off here. Snip these out as well. Just take your time with it. Don't rush it, there's no panic. It's best to always test fit it as well, okay, just to make sure it's going to go on and lay exactly how you thought it would. Just the same. So that's going to go in there very, very nicely as well. So what we'll do, we'll just flip that off exactly the same way for that. Okay. Move on. You wet your finger you can normally pick them up he says quite easily although not that particular time okay same thing again okay we'll just push this in just like so draw it all down nicely Okay, we're happy how that's going to go on. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go round and look at the photo etch sheet here. And what I'm going to do is just add them to these side parts. Um, we've got lots of photo etch parts that are going to go on these and obviously on those. And it's obviously going to take a couple of hours probably to get all these parts on. As I said, you can use the ones you want to and the ones you don't. What I'll do is I'm going to do all these bits now, come together with you at the end when we've got these parts done before we get on with painting and the final assembly of this particular area and talk through the parts I did and didn't and the reasons why. Okay, so as you can see, we've got quite a few bits all done here. So if we just talk about what we've done. Okay, we've got the actual main seat area you can probably see on the close-up. Now, the thing with these is, um, basically, this back canvas area, as you can see, all I've done that with is a little bit of this stuff. Now, this is that type of stretchy tape you get. Um, you get different types of it. This one's quite a coarse one, probably a little bit more coarse than I was hoping for. So what I did, I gave it a coat of PVA glue, just clear um, kids PVA glue, right the way over the top. And then that way, what it actually does, it just fills it in and makes it in. Also, it makes it set rock solid and it's not going to peel off afterwards. But what it does, it just gives it a little bit more texture than having a seat that's just plastic um, and just a little bit more depth what we'll do afterwards we're going to put a little harness on there as well uh, and done those so we've actually put on here we've done we've left on the hoops because we're not going to see those okay but what we've actually done is put the plates on for the actual uh, foot pedals and um, we've put some little brackets in the bottom of the seat you might be able to see on there we've also put these little plates in each side Okay, so that's the main seat area. As you see, floor section is on uh, on this one now. Very nice, very, very rough to the touch. Front area, and obviously we made up this rear basket uh, on the back as well. So that one's in. Very straightforward. Uh, it bends quite nicely. It's got the little uh, ridges into it, so it just bends around. So all I actually do is put them around things like a paintbrush. So you just get yourself a small old sort of paintbrush like this. You can put it in and just bend it around it uh, to give you the right sort of shape and that. And obviously you can use cocktail sticks and thin things if you want to. So that one's done. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to glue this in place. So this basically just sits on the top here. You've got these little locator holes at the back. So we're just going to hold that in. Just one sec. Come along with our glue. And we're just going to touch in these. And this can be drying for a moment before we get going with some paintwork. Okay, so hopefully that's just going to stick in there like that. Now, because it is slightly back heavy because of that seat on there, we need it to sit forward. So what we do, we're just going to stick. Like that to hold that there. 
Okay, other bits we did, um, obviously we've sanded off this rear rack area, this is where the gun goes down inside and out the way, and uh, we've actually fed it into, there's little grooves running down the side of this, um, and we've actually fed it into it to make it in there, this obviously all works and moves now, so that one's done. We've replaced this rear armour plate with a piece of photo etch. Uh, really for the reasons for doing that is it's a lot thinner uh, than the actual plastic one. A couple of parts go on there and then underneath here you might be able to see on the close-up just down in under here. There it is. There's a little box that we made up which I presume is like a map storage area and things like that for the navigator uh, to see. Obviously little tiny plate just went on the top here. Armour backrest obviously on that seat as well. So that's that one was basically done just the same. Now I haven't gone round and done all these tiny little bits uh, and replaced all the cartridges and things on there. There again, it's tiny little parts, I don't think you're going to see it, um, and obviously they're empty and to make the little cylinders up to go in there would be an absolute nightmare, so that's why I've elected to leave those off. Um, the other thing I've done as well, which is quite tricky, and obviously here on the close-up, is these, uh, you've got the actual sights for the main uh, defense gun on the back so it's very hard to see but you might be able to see just there on the close-up those are in there again tiny drop of super glue and that's done and then the same we've done for this little plate on the bottom which is what's going to show through the floor um, obviously there's no uh, part for the kit for this to be on there but what it actually does it's going to hide this area so you've got this one down on here and then this one is going to go on the top so you've got photo etch showing through and it just adds a little bit more detail to that underside so those those bits basically done. The other thing I've done as well is I've actually gone on and done the rear radio. Um, sanded off the top detail and these are four colour ones that just stick on. Very straightforward and I'll show you about doing the instrument panel, how I did that in a little moment. We've obviously put the seat together and we've gone around at the same time and we've done this area as well. Which has got photo etch replacement on the top and then little photo etch sides as well. So that's those done. So what we can do now is actually spray these up. Now for doing this we're going to be using XF71. Um, it's basically the cockpit uh, green. It's the Japanese navy green for it. But to be honest it works great as a cockpit interior colour because it's not that far off of the actual one. So what we'll do, we're just going to do these parts here. So we're just going to pop these down. Okay, and obviously we've got little bits we don't want to blow around too much, so what we'll do is, I'll just show you a few of the little parts. So what we're going to do, we're going to spray this neat, unthinned. The reason for doing that is because one, it'll go on, it'll stick, it'll give a little bit of texture, and when we come back for a little bit of a wash on it as well and things like that, it'll uh, actually give us a, a nice surface to go on to. So we're just going to take airbrush, okay. Paint goes in the colour cup, straightforward in. We're shooting this at around about, if we just turn that up just a little bit, about 22 psi, so quite a high air pressure. Okay, so we're just going to do this bottom one first. And we're going to do everywhere because it's a little bit holy, if you imagine looking through all that ribbon and things. So by doing all the little bits, hopefully it will. Uh, if you do get any show through type areas, so make sure you get in from every angle, top and bottom, sides, things like that. Because I've got a feeling it's all going to show. Okay, so here's the bits there. We'll just do these here. And obviously, what we've got is a few more photo etch parts to go on. So we just do everywhere. And I know obviously we'll be picking these out in black and that afterwards, but just pretend you're acting like a primer. And obviously we've got to paint seats and that, so as I say, don't worry too much. Running areas to hold this. Okay, and we've got some colour photo etch as well to go on the to this as well. So that's that one, then we're just standing out of the way. Same with these side parts. <clears throat> All the details we'll just pick out by hand, so just for the moment we're just going to do it everywhere. Because of the way it is, make sure you get from both sides, back and front. Especially if you're doing the clear edition uh, with a fuselage sides, obviously you're going to need to uh, get in there and do those well. So if we just hold it here. Because that little part can be painted black. There we go, first little colour cut out. Okay, so I'm going to do everywhere else. We're going to do the few large sides, get them painted as well. All the bits done green, and then we can start gluing it together and picking out all the detail. <laughs> 